The following video was recorded by the Strategic Survivability Research Group, 2SRG of Las Vegas, Nevada. The device used for this life insertion demonstration is the Ping Medical Fast Responder Sternal Interosseous Device. This device is the hospital and pre-hospital version, and Ping Medical offers another device which is mechanically identical called the Fast Combat. The Fast Combat, shown here, is packaged and colored for military use. The volunteer patient is a 32-year-old male in excellent physical condition. The provider deploying the fast responder sternal interosseous device is a nationally registered paramedic and this is his first deployment of the fast device. The responder received training prior to this insertion which amounted to a 10-minute lecture and demonstration by a PhD medical researcher using the fast trainer device and SimStern material. This is not a training video, it is a live insertion demonstration. Therefore, for detailed instructions on how to use the Ping Medical Fast Responder Sternal Interosseous Device, visit the Ping Medical website at www.ping.com. The skin surface was cleaned and dried pre-insertion using an iodine skin prep swab. Be sure to follow your medical direction and control requirements for pre-insertion sterility. For insertion, the provider uses the recommended techniques discussed in detail on the Ping Medical website. The provider locates the patient's sternal notch and aligns the sternal notch indicator on the target foot of the device and pushes on axis straight into the manubrium. This user-applied force will power the device to pierce the skin and seat the tip of the infusion tube into the cortical bone of the manubrium. Follow your medical direction and control for this next step. Before hooking up the IV line, it is recommended that you aspirate marrow and flush to clear the tip of the infusion tube. During aspiration and flush, patients sometimes remark of a low level of discomfort in the form of a quick visceral pinch. Once aspirated, the IV tubing and bag are connected to the infusion tube and the flow begins immediately. On a pain scale from 1 to 10, the patient claimed he felt only minor discomfort on a level of 3 or 4 for a second or two. Flow rates can be as fast or as slow as needed. While maximum flow rates in excess of 100 cc's per minute are possible, there is typically no need for such a high flow rate except in cases of severe trauma. The vast majority of EMS infusions, including cardiac arrest, arrhythmias, and most medical conditions, are less than 200 cc's per hour for a variety of reasons. However, as you can see in this example, a gravity-fed bag can flow at a very high rate. To extract the infusion tube, the provider grasps the tubing as close to the skin as possible, and while holding the target foot with the non-dominant hand, pulls back in a steady, continuous motion until the tubing and tips separate from the manubrium. For those who have done this, it is clear that a correctly placed infusion tube is not going to become dislodged during manual or mechanical CPR compressions. This is the insertion site one hour after insertion. You can clearly see the three bone probe insertion points as well as the central infusion tube insertion point. The site should be bandaged and protected against infection. The fast responder and fast combat sternal interosseous devices are precision engineered to remove the guesswork and complexity of I.O. use. Again, for additional information on these devices and others from Ping Medical, go to www.ping.com. This video is a product of 2SRG of Las Vegas, Nevada, research and testing for medical professionals worldwide.